We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. How many of us believe that we are in a world that we come to an end one day and that we need to be faithful even unto death? How many of us believe that there is a race that is set before us? Can you just close your eyes? Think about your life. Are you succeeding in this world or you are failing already? Are you failing? Or you are succeeding? Some of us, we have not started facing persecution, but on our own, we are giving up. Willingly, we are just giving up on our own, without anybody asking us to give up. Just hardship alone, we are giving up. Father Lord, today, we lift up our lives to you. We ask you that you have mercy upon us. You have commanded us that we should be faithful unto death. Please help us to be faithful. You said in your word that to him that overcometh, will I give the right to the fruit of the tree of life. Lord, you are waiting for us to demonstrate our faith in you. Therefore, give us the strength to be faithful. At all times, at all costs, help us to be faithful to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Be seated. The test is Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Revelation 2, verse 10. And the topic is Be Faithful Unto Death. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Be faithful unto death. But I want to read from verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Theatara, write, These things hear the Son of God, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophet, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. The place I just read now is Revelation uh, 2 verse 18. Now I want to go to read verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful. Unto what? Be thou faithful unto what? Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. Praise the Lord. I have never seen a father encouraging his children to die. Have you ever seen anyone? We pray for our children that you will live long. I will not use my hands to bury you. Instead, you will be the one to bury me. That is the prayer of every father. That is the prayer of every good mother. But here we see a father telling his children that if you see opportunity to die for me, please die. 
we see a father here telling his children that when it comes to death, don't dodge. Face it, die. We see a father in this place telling his children that although I have all power to deliver you, although I have power over the devil, he is going to come for you and I'm not going to deliver you from his hand. Instead, be faithful unto death. The devil is going to come after you. He will cast many of you into prison. And you will suffer for my name's sake. And you know what? They will behead some of you, cut off your necks. They are going to throw some of you to dangerous animals. And animals like lions will feed on you. And I am not going to appear supernaturally and just deliver you. Instead, I am telling you, please be faithful unto what? Unto death. Be faithful. Be ready to die for what you believe. We have a program, Bible study program. Everybody that was there, we were all pastors. We were talking about the Good Shepherd. How the Good Shepherd so much love his sheep and can give his life for the sheep. And I ask a question. How many of us here, if an armed man, for instance, ISIS, Boko Haram, enters into a church with a gun and tells us, I just need only one man here who can die for these people and I will let the rest to go. And I ask a question, how many of us pastors can go to the extent of coming out to say, okay, I will be the one to die for this, my sheep? I ask a question, and nobody was ready to say, I can do it. Instead, they asked me a very difficult question. They can't have questioned me. And what was the question? Why don't you ask God to perform a miracle? Instead of surrendering your life voluntarily, why not pray for a miracle to happen? It was not a debate. If not, I would have asked that person who was leading the Bible study, I would have asked him, what about the saints of old? For instance, John the Baptist, he was to die. They told Jesus. Jesus never went there to rescue him. Instead, Jesus Christ said, blessed is he who is not offended on account of me. Jesus only brought out evidences that go and tell John what you have seen and heard. That the blind, they see. The deaf, they hear. The message of the kingdom is being preached to the poor. Go and tell him that he never made any mistake. I am the Christ. He never made any attempt to deliver John the Baptist from the prison. The man who lived the whole of his life for him. John the Baptist had just one assignment. He was a signboard pointing everybody to Jesus Christ that this is the Son of God. The one that is going to come. He came to prepare the way for Jesus. How could Jesus leave a man like this to rot in jail? There was no miracle to deliver him. I want to ask us a question. Is it that Jesus Christ never had any power to deliver John from the prison? No. He had power or he had no power? He has power. But did he deliver him? No. God has power to save. It tells us that when we pass through the sea, we'll be with us. 
The sea, the water will not overflow us. When we pass through the fire, he is going to be with us. But I tell you, a lot of times, he comes into the fire to strengthen our faith and not to quench the fire for us. Praise the Lord. It is the truth that sets people free. It's not the number of amen you say. It is the truth that sets you free. So when you have opportunity to get the truth, let nothing distract you at all, not even sleep. A lot of us Christians have misunderstood Christianity to be another thing entirely. Some of us will see Christianity and the name of Jesus as amulets, as charms. We tie around ourselves. But Christianity is a charge. It is a charge to receive a word. It is a charge to believe the word we have received. It is a charge to spread the word that we have received. It is a charge to keep the word that we have received and not dilute it with lies. The final charge is that what we have received, what we have heard and have received and have proclaimed and have kept, we should also die for it. The question is, how many of us can die for our faith? I may not be talking to everybody today because not everybody likes the truth. A lot of people hate the truth. But I know I am talking to at least one person here that if you have come to believe the truth, God is expecting you to die for what you believe in. I remember an evening Peter said to Jesus that Jesus, I will go to jail because of you. And the rest disciples said the same thing. They were ready to lay down their lives for Jesus. But Jesus looked at Peter and told him, In fact, Peter, Satan has asked to save you. He asked to filter you. But I have prayed for you. And when you are strong, strengthen your brethren. If you believe something, Satan is going to come for it. Anything you believe, the day you receive Christ, that day, Satan is going to come for it. If he doesn't come that day, wait for him. He's preparing for the word you have received. Just like the parable of the sower. The Bible says, Satan came on account of the word that he has received, he will definitely come for the word of God inside of you. The fact that Satan is not fighting some people does not mean that they have made it in life. But because they have been defeated already. There are some Christians in the church today, Satan does not fight them. It is because they don't even believe anything at all. It is because they are not hot and they are not cold. Satan does not fight those who are going nowhere. He fights those who are going somewhere. Matthew chapter 13 verses 20 and 21 says, but he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet had he not root in himself, but endureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth, because because of what? Because of the word. By and by, he is offended. If you hear the word of God, Satan is going to come for it. But the giver of the word is expecting us to stand to the end. I 
I ask myself a lot of times, if Christianity is not a battle for our souls, if Christianity, if it is not a battle, why would Jesus use the word to him that overcometh? Read Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 3. You will always come across this word. To him that overcometh. To him that overcometh. If there is no battle, there is no need to overcome. If there is no need to fight, there is no need to win. And there is nothing to lose. But there is a battle. The battle is for our souls. The battle is for the place of eternity. Satan lives in this world. But many of us have been fooled by lies. And we so much believe the lies than the truth. We hear about Job. In Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2, how Satan came because of the faithfulness of Job and tested Job. But you know what? God testified that Job will never give up. Job chapter 1, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and eschewed evil. Look at verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he had is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of of the Lord. There was an argument. And the argument was that Job loved God because God was protecting him. One. And then two, because God blessed Job. And Satan said, God, if you take away your protection, if you can allow me to touch him, God, If you can just allow me to touch his properties, Job will curse you to your face. And God said, okay, go ahead. The question is, can we be faithful like Job? Look at chapter 2, verse 3. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou moved me against him to destroy him without cause. You see it? And look at what Satan said in verse 4. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man had will he give for his life. Satan knows that if he comes for our heads, if he comes for our life, if we are not strong, we will give up. And that is why he attacks us sometimes with sickness. He attacks our womb so that we will feel that we are not complete. He attacks us. So that we can't produce children. He attacks our finances. He attacks our skin. He attacks our digestive system. So that we can't eat some food. And become miserable. So that we will spend more buying food. God knows that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. God also knows that it is not every of his children that he can accuse and tempt and become victorious. And as an example of such a person, of such a child of God, is Job himself. I know I am talking to somebody in this house today. Wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice, I know I am talking to somebody 
right now. Probably Satan has come for something in your life. Maybe Satan has come for your faith. And God is expecting you to be faithful to death. 2007, a cousin of mine who a lecturer wanted to sleep with before he could give her her script. She could not pass. Her name is Egoro Grace. She's married today. It's no longer Ashley Grace. The lecturer wanted to sleep with her because he felt that without him, my cousin could not graduate. And I tell you the truth, in Ozora Polytechnic, her mates graduated, but she was still remaining. She couldn't graduate to begin her HND. As at when she went back to the school, the lecturer was still the one who would still attend to her. So they told her, well, you have to rewrite this exam. And before you can write the exam, you have to pay for the past semester and pay for this one before you can rewrite. But you know what? The same lecturer will be the one to mark the same script. So I borrowed money from one of my friends called Gus Taimimodu. I borrowed money from him and I told him, I have a need. Lend me some money. I told that my cousin, I said, I want to stand by you because of your faith. Not every girl can do it. At then, then she was not a virgin, but she had repented. But you know, a lot of girls will say, it is something I have done over and over. Just a few minutes, why not I do it? After all, I'm no longer a virgin. People do it. In fact, some parents can become angry and crucify their daughters for not doing it. That do you think I am wasting my money on you for nothing? Are you a virgin? Why don't you just do it? Why don't you just do it and come out with a certificate? I need results. Please give me results. Produce results. I know a tribe in this country... If their women are unable to get pregnant, they tell the women, go outside and bring pregnancy. Are you not aware? Yes. Eh? Yes. Go outside. We need children in this family. We don't care whether the children resemble our landlord, whether they resemble your driver. It is not our business. The only thing we want is that we want children in this home. Period. And there are families that are raising children from men that the children will not know as fathers. But see another man as a father. The Bible says that the marriage bed is holy and that it must not be defied. All adulterers, God is going to judge. Whether it is by consent of the husband and the wife or not, a sin is a sin. And God is going to bring everything under judgment. But you know that there are women who have lost their marriages because they refuse to compromise. There are women who have lost their jobs because they refuse to compromise their faith. Do you think that God is going to pay them back with evil? God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. This, my cousin, was to go and pay the money in school on a Thursday. On Tuesday of that same week, she was called that they have found her missing script. And she got her certificate. Stand for what you believe. And the Lord God Almighty, who does not sleep, who does not slumber, 
We reward you for your faith. There are some of you, you have suffered to train your children in school, but no job. Sometimes they come to us with their papers, with their certificates, with their applications. And they tell us that, oh, the manager said, I must belong to their court before I can be employed. You, a father, what has been your advice to your children when they come to you with challenges like this? Do you tell them to die for what they believe? Recently, a case was brought before me. A manager trying to sleep with one of the workers. She used to be on his good book. But a time came, he wanted something from this lady. And the lady said, I can't do it. My advice was that if you have believed God, stand for what you believe. There is this story I was told that armed robbers entered an apartment. And in that apartment, there was a woman and her son. Probably they couldn't get money from there. And they commanded the woman to sleep with her son. And the son said, I can't do it. I choose to die. If you want to shoot, please shoot. And the mom looked at the son and said, please, for my sake, do it and leave. We are living in a world of temptation. But God wants us to live for our faith. Uh, sister, sorry, can you please stand? Let them see you. Just you, yes. Uh, maybe, please stand, yes. Mrs. Somoifi, you had how many guests, right? How many guests? Four guests. The last one is what? A boy, look at him there. Did you not face challenges? Please sit down. I don't know your story, but I know definitely that there are family people who tell the husband, there is nobody to carry on your name. If you die, your name will perish. This woman cannot give you male children. Why don't you go outside? But today, the Lord has blessed them. And it's our prayer that the Lord that has given you this child, that God will protect this child for us. Amen. There are men who fail to understand that they are the ones that put the girl there. It is garbage in, garbage out. It is what you put that the woman gives back to you. The woman has no right to determine who becomes a girl and who becomes a boy. It is what you give to the woman. The woman keeps a nurture for nine months. In fact, you're supposed to thank the woman. You gave honorary spermatozoa. And the woman is giving you a full child. But some men become offended because the child is a girl. Or the child is a boy. Why? You are not grateful for the gift of God. Many marriages have broken down. And you know what? There are women today, when they are pregnant, they go to the hospital, they check the sex of the baby. The baby is a lady, it's a girl, they abort the baby. Or if the baby, the one they want is what they will live to live. The one they don't want, they will kill the child. We are living in a wicked world where the rule of engagement is the human will. Many of our laws today are based on what do these people want and not what God wants. I just read a story of a small girl, 15 years old, in the U.S. who got missing. And they saw her already acting blue films and her videos, 58 videos already produced. This is a kind of world we are living in. Thank God the man was caught. 
one Mr. Johnson was caught. But do you know that there are girls who will choose to die for what they believe than act those films? Do you know that? We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com Email us at hosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com God bless you.